All right, guys, Good Boy 32 here. Check it out. These are the first shots that were fired with this brand new VP9 from HK. This is the OD Green, the really cool flat dark earth slide. Let's give it through its paces. Here comes the review. Boy, is it windy out here. <laughs> All right, guys, again, this is the HK VP9. Now, this is the HK's offering of the polymer striker fired handgun. I am actually loving this pistol. I've only shot it a couple times, but I tell you what, I know pistols well enough to know this guy's a performer. Not only that, but it has a, a tremendous reputation as being a good quality performer. Got some people that I know that may not care for this thing, but it is what it is. All right, so let's talk about this thing real quickly. From here to the front, we've got 7.34 inches. The height is 5.41 inches. Width is 1.32 inches. The barrel length is 4.09 inches. We've got some wind going out here. Total weight empty. Well, the mag is 25.65 ounces. All right, so this thing comes with a couple of 15 round magazines. A lot of people don't like the fact that you got a full size gun with a 15 round mag. Well, I'm pretty sure they make some extensions. If you don't like it, I'm sure you can change it on your own. It's a pretty cool gun. Now let's talk about the sights on this thing. These are dovetailed in. As you can see, there's a Novak style sights right here, dovetailed on the front. The thing is, is these are the phosphorus rechargeable lights. A lot of people don't like those. I, I don't care. I got this, picked this thing up for under $500. Come on, man. Pick your battles. Woo! Had a wind finally stop. All right, so one of the coolest things about this thing is the color. Now, when I first saw it, I was like, you know, I don't really care for the color, but it's kind of wearing on me. I do like the black guns. I really do. But on occasion, you come up with something neat. This guy, Flat Dark Earth, OD Green on the bottom. I'm digging it. What I want to do now is I want to go over some of the specifics and the details on the firearm itself. So first of all, let's go ahead and talk about a couple of things. On the top again, we've got the Novak style sights that are dovetailed in. A lot of people go ahead and elect the tactical version. I actually had a chance to buy the tactical version for $549 from Palmetto State Armory. I neglected to take advantage of that. So unfortunately, we settled for this guy. Phosphorus sights on the front and the back. We've got a cocked indicator in the rear. It's going to indicate red. Secondly, we've got a loaded chamber indicator right here on the side. You're going to see red. There you go, just like that. The slide is, has a nice cut all the way around. Very aggressive serrations right here and here. You've got these wings that pull out on the side right there. That's one of the reasons I actually do like this guy. It's awesome. So you can press check front, press check to the rear. Very nice. One of the things that most people agree with is that the HK VP9's ergonomics are second to none. You've got this beautiful beaver tail section right here with this beautiful hump. While we're talking about the grip right now, this is as an absolute perfect stippling. Uh, this kind of weird looking stuff, <laughs> stringy deal. But you've got the interchangeable back straps here and side panels here. You can adjust not only the width, but the hump on the back side. I do like the fact that you've got pull sections right here for the mag. There you go. So if you got troubles, you can reach up there and grab it out. And coming forward, we've got finger grooves in here. These are not very aggressively pronounced finger grooves, which makes it perfect for just about any hand. Up here, you've got an undercut, which of course goes into the Cobra section, as I call it, with a paddle type mag release. You can release from either side right there. The trigger guard comes up, it's tapered. You've got serrations in the front right here and a four-session Picatinny 1913 rail. These are actual 1913 rails. Going on, we'll talk about the trigger here in a few seconds. We're talking about we got a, two points of safety in this here. you got a drop safety that includes a plunger disconnect in here for the uh, trigger disconnect and the dingus right here on that. A couple of the other features that I absolutely love, you've got ambidextrous slide release or slide lock back or whatever you want to call it. But anyway, I do like this right here. If you'll notice earlier when I was talking about doing a weak hand, you can do your slide release without any issues. Perfect. You've also got a slide release in the front. The pivot takedown pin is right here. We'll go ahead and remove it just like that. Pull it back. 
I don't have to pull the trigger on this specific one. So you can see the internal workings, eh, pretty much look just about like anything else in the line. You've got slide rails here and here all the way in the back. Now this is neat because they do position these all the way to the rear. You can see the interior of the slide right here is very nice. This is a unique safety system. I don't think the uh, Walther and the TP9SF are, slides are going to be interchangeable with this guy right here. But in any case, we'll go ahead and remove it. You've got a captured guide spring. It is a flat spring and it is steel. The barrel, 4.09 inches and it is cold hammer forged. Really nice looking grooves in there. But you can see the interior of the slide. We've got a little bit of wear going on there. And again, guys, this pistol has less than 100 rounds to it. We'll go ahead and put it back together. Put your dry spring and your drive rod in position here, just like so. Bring it back onto your rails, bring it back, lock the slide back, pivot, and there you go. We're ready to shoot again. Thing locks back and operates absolutely wonderful. Alright, so one of the things, I know that looked goofy, but in any case, one of the things that I actually dig to do is I'm going to show you some of the key features as it relates to the pistol in operation. We're going to do the trigger pull, the trigger reset, we're going to take a look at the recoil, we're also going to take a look at the ejection pattern because there's some people in the past who've had issues with their ejection. In any case, let's go ahead and get started. Here we go. All right, guys, in this portion of the video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the trigger function. We're going to look at the trigger pull, how steady it is, and we're going to observe the reset. Again, we're going to utilize that ambidextrous slide release. As you can see, your slide chamber indicator in case we've got a round in the chamber. At this point in time, we're going to go ahead and pull the trigger. If you're pressing the dingus, we'll go ahead and bring it back. Now, the take up on the VP9 trigger is probably one of the absolute best. Watch this. Beautiful. Reset. Nice. Little take up. There we go. Reset. Not bad. I do enjoy the trigger and the recoil on this is very manageable simply because of the ergonomics of the pistol. Let's look at the next option. Well, Alright guys, real quickly I want to go over what we got in the box. So anyway, you get the HK box just like this. Go ahead and push that up. You've got the pistol itself. This specific one came with two mags. We've got two additional back straps and two additional set of side panels with a reloader. Of course, you got all the cool little information back here with the operator's manual. Very simple, very easy. Alright guys, we're sitting out here at the 10 yard range. and Actually, I'm going to sit in a 7 yard line. What we're going to do is I'm going to test this bad boy out, see how I can do it with it. First of all, we're going to do both hands. We're going to do weak hand, strong hand, a POV, and then a rush shootout. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to shoot at that top left target. Wind's blowing like crazy out here. I don't know how we're going to do the rifle range. We may have to wait until later on. But in any case, let's go ahead. Both hands, top left target, and we're going to go five rounds. Here we go. One of the things that I can tell you is I compare this really closely with the Walther PPQ and their Turkish brother from the uh, Canik series, the TP9SF. Now, as you remember, the Walther PPQ and the Canik, their slides are interchangeable. I don't know if that's going to work with this guy. We'll find out. So let's go ahead, strong hand, top right target. Here we go. Alright, be honest with you, that was uh, only the third time I actually pulled the trigger on this thing. I'm actually liking this firearm. We'll go ahead and we're going to do weak hand, and then we'll roll over to the bird's eye view and the uh, rush fire. Here we go. Well, Alright guys, well that wasn't so bad right handed. That was actually the only the third real time I've actually pulled the uh, trigger on this thing. I'm actually getting used to it. So we're going to do weak hand bottom left target.
can was getting used to it towards the end. So now let's go ahead. We're going to do the rush shoot in the middle. Stand by. Now when I say this is an expedited shoot, what I'm going to do is start from the low ready. We're going to come up and we're going to go ahead and press out five rounds as quick as we can while trying to maintain that target. Now one of the best pistols I've ever experienced while trying to do this exercise was the Walther PPQ. I want to see how this guy can hold up to that guy. Alright, so <laughs> that wasn't that bad. So well, next up we're going to do the POV. I'm going to show you what these phosphorus sights look like. These things are very bright. A lot of people like to have those night sights, depending on the firearm. But I'll tell you what, you charge these things up with a flashlight, they are bright as day. Alright guys, so you can see here we've got a magazine in there with five rounds. We'll go ahead and bring it up and I'm going to show you. Look at those phosphorus sights. They are extremely bright. Am I upset about them not being tritium? Eh, not really. If you can see what the sights look like up in there, let's go ahead and shoot this guy off. Here we go. I think that's by far the worst I've ever done shooting through the camera. Taking a minute to get used to that trigger. All right, guys, well, this is the test for the ejection pattern. And the reason I do this is on several occasions, there's been a lot of different variations of firearms where you'll have weak ejection, stuff coming out that hits you on the forehead all over the place. We don't like that. This guy has been a culprit as well as, I think, a couple of the Glocks. Uh, I've noticed in the past some of them were sent out with the 40 cal spring and drive rod assemblies in them. I think Big Johnson had that issue. So what I want to do is go ahead and see what the ejection pattern is on this thing. Anything that doesn't hit me and clears my arm, I think is a uh, successful little deal. Here we go. Well, I would say that's a thumbs up on the ejection pattern test. Uh, again, I don't think you're going to have any problems down the road. I know at one point they did. Next up, let's look at the recoil when we're rapid firing. Here we go. All right, guys, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and shoot right past the camera right there. I've actually, I have destroyed one camera. I'll just have you guys know that. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that I can do a rapid fire, I believe there's six rounds in this magazine. And the object is, is to see that muzzle and where it goes back and forth up like this. I know a lot of guys uh, have some issues with the, uh, the dry spring and the drive rod in certain aspects, but basically what it is, guys, is the inertia going back and forth with this guy right here is causing your muzzle rise. So here we go, as fast as I can pull the trigger, and hopefully we don't destroy that camera. Here we are. Now I can tell you in about 20 yards up there, I was able to keep a three-foot circle with the impacts of the rounds with shooting this as fast as I could. We'll go ahead and split that in slow-mo and see how it looks. Stand by. Alright guys, that's it man. Well, my assessment of this bad boy right here is, it's an HK. Simple as simple put, it's an HK. And in my opinion, if you are a firearms enthusiast, you owe it upon yourself, or owe it to yourself, to put one of these in your collection before, or at least at one point in your life. The one reason I got this guy was because I don't have one. Add this to the collection, you can always say I got an HK, but would I recommend it? Uh, if you could find it for a great deal, yes, I would absolutely recommend it. Otherwise, I think there's some better options out there, give or take, but we'll see. Gil, I know you're a big fan of these things, and that's it. I'll give a shout-out to the Ammo Mafia real quickly because I know those guys, they work really hard, and they have been a huge source of information for the Second Amendment stuff. So, Ammo Mafia, I greatly appreciate you guys helping me out with that as well as all the other individuals out there. But the HK VP9... Yeah, 
I would buy one in a heartbeat. As a matter of fact, I did. $4.99 out the door. It's Cowboy Boy 32, sport red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless his men, women in uniform, 24-7 for our freedom. Freedom's not free. HK VP9. Well worth the money. Cowboy Boy 32, out.